Okay, let's get it started. We're recording, be on YouTube, awesome. Uh, well, thanks for coming to this session, YouTube. making a choice. <laughs> hey? Hi, YouTube. Hi. Yay, hi, YouTube. Hi. Love you. Um, right, guys, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm sure you all know them, but anyway, tell you who you are and what you do usually. Here's the mic. So, hey, I'm Model OSR. I've been in Jagex for just under four years. I started in player support. I'm currently a lead QA tester. Hey, I'm Mod Days. I'm a content developer. If you've um, been on the combat beta at all, you should know my name. Um, otherwise, i am basically been responsible for anything combat related, legacy mode and all that. So any questions about that, direct them at me. Particularly anything about EOC, direct at him. Uh, I'm Mod Moltair. I'm a senior designer. I've worked on, well, some Void Knight stuff, as you might be able to guess. Uh, the world events, player imports, a couple of other bits and pieces along the way. Hi, everyone. I'm Mod <laughs> Deg. <laughs> and uh, I'm a content developer. I've worked on the Mighty Fall, uh, on the Giant Mole, and on the Room Value update that was quite recent. And the Elder God Quest, he and I. Hello, uh, I'm Mod Timbo, uh, RuneScape designer, game balancer for RuneScape, so I'm responsible for experience, the economy, drop tables, all that sort of awesome stuff. Um, I designed the Mighty Fall, I did the story, skill chompers, that sort of stuff. That's it. Exciting. Right, next 45 minutes of questions. Who would like to start with a question? Who's got a question? Can't wait to have one. Come on. Yeah, Mr. You're going to be next. Um, a question for Timbo. Would you consider increasing the experience job for Queen Black Dragon? Because at the moment it's terrible. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> Who would uh, consider it? Right. I mean, security. <laughs> I mean, for the time spent killing the QBD, you can kill her under two minutes. It's not that bad. Um, but we can certainly look at it, it's not a problem. Um, is there any new mechanics that you guys are really excited about that are going to be coming out? Mechanics and, of any specific wait, thing? or And can you tell us about them? <laughs> uh, well, as ModMart will have announced not long ago, uh, with the what we'd like to do with what was going to be the invention skill is divide up the things that we were going to use there and use them as parts of updates for other skills that have been without for a little while. So things like smithing that haven't had anything in a bit. Uh, we'd like to put in things that were going to be in, in Inventor like uh, customizing your weapons, level up your weapons, um, the sort of mechanics that allow you to customize your gear to your play style a little more. And that's something that, that I'm quite excited for because I suggested doing it. Uh, <laughs> and therefore I have a vested interest, so I'm biased. Anyone else got um, so I'm not sure how many of you know about this, but something that got announced early in the day as well is um, we're going to be adding a first RuneScape raid. So yeah, we're going to take like the approach of a raid and just give it a little RuneScape twist. So that'll be pretty exciting to see what comes about of that. Uh, yeah, I have some mechanics that I'm excited for. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> um, with with the concept of leveling up my, you know, a weapon that you have, how is that going to, with currently existing weapons, you know, say draggers that are already level 90, how is that going to affect the stats that they currently have, as opposed to, say, are you going to be able to level up a steel dagger up to being level 90? I'm uh, okay, so it's too early days to say for sure what the expected range of outcomes would be, but... I can certainly say that it would be a very poor idea to allow you to make a steel dagger as powerful as a Drygor. <laughs> it's more likely that leveling up your weapons would give you more, more scope for niche uses, more, more different ways of using the weapons, rather than specifically making them, making them more powerful by flat increments. Okay, so uh, stuff like maybe increasing... Stab crit percentages on. So, have that so you could have 
I'm spinning ideas off the top of my head now because it's not been designed yet, but it might be a choice between paths that take you down uh, critical hit chance, critical hit uh, additional damage. Uh, it might be poison effects that you put on that are actually worth anything, un unlike some of our poison effects that currently exist that need retuning a little bit. Um, that's, that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, do better. Um, we, we've, heard, we've heard that from a number of places, so it's something we want to look into. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, more about, it's more about choice than about making older weapons override newer weapons. Bear in mind that if we make you able to level up a steel dagger, we'll probably make you able to level up, level up a dry gore as well. Right. So, so we wouldn't be looking to just make them all the equivalent of 10 levels higher because of the things that would do to the DPS and to Timbo's blood pressure. <laughs> uh, we, we'd consider something hopefully a little more nuanced than that. Anything for Will we able to ever be able to name our weapons or any type of gear? You could, in theory, name your weapons now. Uh, the only trouble is that any weapon that you named, you'd need something like five quests worth of storage space on your character for every weapon you got to name. So if we let you name 10 weapons, that's the same amount of storage on your character as making 50 quests. Uh, it's something that the, that's something that the new engine might help with, although that's not, that's not something I can confirm at the moment. So we could potentially do something with uh, the same approach that you take to player imports ships, allowing you to choose names from components uh, or something to do with pets where you just have a list. But obviously, if you're looking to put uh, strings of text in, then that's something that we have to be quite careful with. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, would you look at um, the levels that you need um, for smithing, for example? Um, you smith rune of level 90. <laughs> um, yes. Um, so we all know that smithing is quite an old legacy skill. Is It's obviously when it was made back in 2002. Rune was the bee's knees, um, and that is not longer the case. Um, we do want to do a mining smithing rework. Some of you might have already seen that by Mod Jack, uh, discussed in the future updates for him. Um, I think, I'm not sure what was said in 2015, probably not this, but um, we do want to do one, and it would involve rejigging levels to make Rune low level. Um, it probably have an impact on the outc value of Rune and stuff like that, and the rarity of Runeite, and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, we do want to do it. Whether we do do it is a different matter. That seems to be one for you, Doug. You're used to making Rune more valuable. <laughs> Anything Any other questions? Next up. Yep. Hello, one down the front. Any ideas or news on the construction update that Mod Jack discussed last year? Oh, were you in uh, Mod Mark's presentation at three? I wasn't, no. Okay, a quick recap then. Uh, yes, we would like to take the parts of Mod Jack's construction update that related to surface building. We would like to extend the construction skill with it such that training construction is no longer build table, tear down table, <laughs> call butler for more planks, repeat. Uh, that is a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of work. Uh, so I don't know that we're announcing that for 2015 as, as a thing. But he did also in the same breath mention the player power extension called Rune Labs, uh, which is basically put forward what you would like to happen, get people to hit the support button. The things that go up to the top we will consider in the light of building them and poll and attempt to put in the game. So the more people you can get enthused with uh, that sort of area of updates, the more likely it is to have the budget assigned to it to get it done. Um, regarding the question previous to this one, with um, the value of rune and smithing, if it was to be reduced, would also then the mining requirement for mining rune what would the impact of that, and then would that mean that we'd be adding additional ore or different methods to end, end game mining? I know there's a ton of high level, really good XP rates for mining already, so I'm not saying that, but just, you know, 
a type of ore higher than runite as of right now. Yeah, if you've seen, if you, I don't know if you've seen Jack's mining smithing rework. Um, his mining smithing does have new ores above. So his brought rune down to 50, I think, and added about uh, new ores every 10 levels. It also added a new type of coal as well. So you wouldn't need like 14 coal to one ore or something at a high level. Um, there'd be a brand new type of coal. Um, there would definitely be new ore. There would definitely be changes to drop tables that have runite on them if we reduce the alchemy value and that sort of thing. Uh, like we wouldn't just nerf rune and then just leave it at that. We would change mining, we would change smithing, we would change values, we would change drop tables. It'd be a, it's, you can see, you already see it's a, such a huge amount of work, but we would do that. That's what we would do to the uh, if we made rune level fifty, for example. Um, my question's about mini games and uh, how to keep people in there. Like. For now, I feel all the old, older mini games they don't have the rewards that pull people in. Like obviously, you recently redid Barbarian Assault, but I feel it's still kind of a niche for higher level players to gain bonus agility and maybe fire making XP from it. Um, what will you be doing to maybe make it more accessible for lower players to gain, uh, well, XP in these mini games and keep them? in them rather than saying oh XP waste and just running off and doing other things Anyone want that? Um, I think one of the main things like when we do a minigame we work is you have to look at how much there is in the game right now and like you say it's like people see it as an XP waste it's like oh I could play that minigame but then I wouldn't be doing this so I think one of the things we really would look at is making giving rewards which you have to keep going back to the minigame to do so it's like it's repeatable like we have a lot of minigames at the moment where you get the reward and then you're like that's it I've finished that minigame I never need to go back to it so that's the sort of thing and it'll be in its, let's say mining as a completely random skill I take an hour out of mining to play this minigame but in the long run this might give me a better chance at mining rocks so I, it accelerates so it is worth doing that minigame and I think that's the main thing it's like you need to have things where you're going back to the minigame over, over time and this means as well that the like, players playing it don't decline over time because we see it like you launch a minigame and you have like high players and then over time it just goes down and down so if, we, if it's repeatable rewards hopefully we keep those player numbers higher so it's easy to find games in the long run I think also on that, um, we want to try and uh, we're trying to make mini games more accessible with the grouping system, which um, we're still working on a little bit. And I think Mob Mark Mish mentioned in the uh, 2015 thing that we're considering adding like a mini game spotlight sort of thing. So maybe every day or every week, there's there's extra rewards for doing barbarian assault or for doing pest control, just to try and say. Today, it will be really easy to get a group because everyone else is coming in for this extra stuff. Yeah. We do have a list of minigames who their main problem is simply that they don't give enough stuff. Uh, Trouble Brewing is an excellent example. If you're interested in uh, the, the one-off rewards, then you struggle to find a group. And then once you've finished struggling to find a group you remove yourself from the minigame pool and everyone else struggles to find a group because you're not playing anymore. Uh, so all of those very old ones do need looking at to bring their rewards up into line, um, preferably in such a way as we don't make the best way of playing the game breaking it, which was the problem with Heist, of course, with uh, the collusion games that go on, and that's something that we're very keen to avoid in the future. Um, lately you guys have been adding a lot more kind of AFK methods of training like with the Elf City you see the Saren Stones AFK mining AFK thieving would you guys add something like treadmills for agility <laughs> no um, I think AFK is sort of it's a very it's not it's a uh, it's like a relative term, really. Like There are some methods that are considered to be AFK. Like, Saren Stones are, I guess. But, um, and like we are looking to add things that 
are slightly, probably not as efficient. Serum stones are pretty good, but in batch two in Elf City, there is things that are not as efficient but are more AFK. So there's the um, there's a prayer training in uh, in Elf City batch two that is less efficient money wise and also slower, but also but is like really quite what is not that not that is worthwhile to do is prayer but it's very very slow so why you'd see like i can't remember the xp rates for prayer like 500k an hour for example prayer maybe you'd see 300k an hour in the elf city but it'd be a little bit more expensive um and that's the sort of direction we want to go with um with skilling and afk and that sort of thing we want to make it we don't want to devalue click intensive activities um for example like agility would never get a treadmill we wouldn't do that to agility because it's very click in, it's relatively click intensive it's quite um it's that sort of thing we don't we, we're not intentionally adding tons and tons of afk like you wouldn't be able to afk the entire game at some point um but we do want to make things slightly more sociable slightly more easier like the seren stones is a hive of social activity right now um because everyone's just sort of clicking and talking like i've been there loads of times with my avatar and we're all having a good time and that sort of thing so I think that's what we want to aim for. We don't want to aim for every skill having an AFK method, and that certainly being the most efficient method in the game. Next question? So it's you getting in the way with your avatar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just on the treadmill point, will the heaven po- uh, poles not be AFK then in that it will be quite intensive? <laughs> um, the serenity posts in heaven are... Very much like the artisan smithing, um, where you, it, where the dwarf barks out a, a certain item to make. Um, it's going to be more harsh than the artisan smithing. So while you be AFK on the post doing a pose like a crane or a fox or something, um, she, uh, Lady Heffern will call out a pose to make. And if you don't make that pose, you only get ten percent of the experience you should be getting. Um, it will be AFK. It will be at terrible rates. I think it's like, I think it's like nine k an hour or something uh, right now if you don't follow her um but obviously if you follow her it's much more worth it <laughs> um so yeah um it will be afk but it will not be worth afking it can i just ask are you the reason why in the uh, fate of the gods they cut the divine stairmaster <laughs> yes <laughs> Uh, is there any um, plans to introduce any iconic female characters? Um, I mean, the, the game industry as a whole is, is often commented on as being pa- quite patriarchal. And I'm not saying that RuneScape is, but obviously there are some lead characters that are female, but is there any further plans for that? Hmm. So I, I'm also very aware of, uh, of recent developments in the industry that, I mean, obviously are, have been a long time coming. Uh, we we try not to fill quotas and could, because as much as anything else that's that's as patronizing as as not putting them in at all would be but there are some characters that jump out of our stories as being very obviously uh, only a female lead would work in this Kar- karazi and jessica in the void knight series uh, to me could never have been anything other than who they were and we try and make sure that the stories we tell ensure that more than just middle class straight white male has uh, has anyone to relate to it doesn't always work and i know that there were comments that some people felt that ozan in particular was whitewashed uh which well i'm not I can't say for sure whether that is or isn't the case because I, I don't have the position to comment on it. But if people have felt that, then clearly we still need to be watching very carefully for, to make sure that we do represent ages, genders, uh, nationalities uh, in a sensible but all-inclusive way. Yeah. The Raptor's a strong female character, right? <laughs> The raptor's pretty strong. I don't think we know what gender the raptor is. The raptor's female. Oh. Not really. I'm really joking. Wow. That's confirmed. It's on YouTube now. Is it, yeah, you, you put that on YouTube. I thought the raptor was yelps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this isn't really a question. It's more like a general what's your thought on this. What do you, what's your take on sort of 
boosting that's going on with mini games nowadays. Because let's say in my clan, sometimes they ask anyone want to go heist, and then it's like you mean boosting, right? And I'm like no, and then nobody comes. Because sort of the thing you have now with with uh, the mini games giving really good rewards, which makes them of course very attractive. Also, it, tends, it gives a lot of boosting, sort of with uh, also uh, cabbage punch bonanza. Uh, punch Bonanza, where people want their Slayer VIP tickets, they boost for it with their friends. Um, and also, of course, you have the trim where everyone boosts Castle Wars. So wh what do you think about that, sort of? So yeah, completely with you there. Boosting is definitely, for me personally, something I would prefer to avoid. A minigame should be about the minigame, not looking for techniques to go around it. In any situation, where we feel boosting is there, it's something that we do need to look at as a group. Something I personally do is look on the forums and look at the feedback that you guys post up, and we review that on a daily basis. Anything we can see where you're posting up suggestions about possible solutions for, instead of a boosting, what we could do, maybe a tweak or a change to a mini game, we'll review that and we'll put it forward to design and look for solutions. So I'd actually throw the question back and say that if there's a particular mini game that you feel strongly of there's boosting being used, how would you like to go about changing it? What would you suggest could be a better tactic within the minigame? And I'd then we can review that. Sort of have an idea if you want to hear it. Yeah, I think, yeah, throw it out to the crowd. We yeah, can. all right. Uh, let's say um, if you look at any of the FPS games going on right now, let's say Call of Duty or Halo or whatever, right? You can't gain XP if you play a custom private match with your friends. But if you go find a game, you play with random people across the globe, then you can gain XP. But then again, you don't want to take out the fun of playing with your friends and, oh, I'm not getting XP, so that sucks for them, right? But then you can also, instead of doing that, you can give them like um, a reward reduction, basically. So let's say I want to go heist. If I, play with, if I play a custom game with my friends, I won't get as much rewards as I would if I go, went and played a competitive game with heist against other players. That's just a suggestion. No, personally, I think it's a good idea. Again, you're promoting the whole idea of actually go out and play a minigame as it's meant to be played. Yeah. If you want to change it, then we're not going to kind of stop you doing that. Yeah. But at the same time, you won't be rewarded as much as playing yeah. as you're meant to. And if I you think do that's to throw back towards Timbo as well in terms of like the balancing, in terms of like reducing rewards based on custom game compared to teams, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, because uh, let's say I have a friend who boosts, and let's say I don't boost, and I'm really good at the minigame, let's say I'm really good, I'll be getting a lot more rewards than he will, and then he'll start, he'll start doing it himself, but he's not as good, then he won't reap the rewards like that. So it's like you've got to fight for your rewards, sort of. But you can also have fun with friends. kind of stops boosting. Anyway, thanks. You're welcome, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Mr. Green. <laughs> Um, the guy that just brought up the uh, point about minigames, um, when he talked about Cabbage Face Punch, um, there's a lot of animosity between the players who kill the small monkeys once they're gorillas, but it's not even really worth it. You get two points for killing the small monkeys as a gorilla. Would you consider buffing that? So the original design was that you wouldn't get any points at all for killing monkeys as a gorilla. The, that was made as a change because essentially there wasn't enough uh, you could do to to disrupt the players that were still alive once you were gorillaed. Uh, it is certainly true that there are fewer ways to score once you've been knocked out, and that's not ideal because that encourages people who have been knocked out to just drop, right. which obviously is to be avoided because if you just drop then you're out the game the, the game itself the balance suffers the sides suffer and you don't have the people stopping the charge as you should i would probably be more inclined to focus the way that the guerrilla players score more on helping to helping to stop players going the other way but mean it's less uh less predicated on just having the luck of having that player run past you when they're already on low health, which is the current problem with it. Um, if, say, if all, all attacks against players were in some way contributing to Gorilla's score and that they scored then as a team rather than on an individual basis, which then obviously depends on getting the chances, then that would probably strike me as a better approach to it. 
okay. than, than simply buffing the numbers on the monkeys, which you can hang around and farm. Right. Because uh, that would be more likely to encourage the gorilla players to not bother stopping the players who are still going back and forth, which right. cuts out the competitive aspect of it. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Do you not feel as a, as a content team that there's too much bonus experience coming into the game with the promotions <laughs> <laughs> and, and now a bonus experience weekend in, in November? Does it not devalue your skills that you obviously work hard to put into the game? That sounds like a balancing question to me. <laughs> Um, I should say first we do recognise that we are putting a lot of bonus experience into the game um, it is something that we are looking to address um, lately we have given a lot of bonus experience away be that through promotions or retention content or, or that mini games all that sort of stuff um, you, you would have noticed the bonus XP swap store um, trying to get rid of some bonus experience in exchange for some goodies um, that has helped quite a lot I think um, we got rid of a quarter of burn experience in the game or something along those lines. This is an incredible amount. Um, but <laughs> whether or not I devalue skills is a completely different matter. That's a, such a subjective... Such a sub subject yeah. Subjective. Subjective. <laughs> again. Subjective. Question. That, um, <laughs> like, I, I, I'm getting 299s today myself on my own tube account, and I don't feel that any of that bonus experience has devalued my achievement, for example. Um, but to someone else, like, that would, of course. Um, whether or not it's devaluing the game, I don't necessarily agree with that either. It has certainly not helped matters, but, um, but yeah, we know it's a problem and we're looking to fix it. Um, um, with I, sorry, I was just going to add to that. Um, Basically, like, I've been playing now for four or five years, and I haven't got a single level 99. So to all of you that do have level 99s, like, you're still really impressive to me, and I still find it really hard. So, like, while you guys might be going, the game's really easy now, there's so much bonus XP, for me, it's still quite a grind. I am, I am a noob, and but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, so while there, while there is a lot of bonus XP, it's still it's still a bit of a struggle down at the lower end, and it takes a lot of work. So yeah, there's probably there's there's still room, there, but there's improvements we can make in that area. Um, I realize that since for the amount of time that it's been in the game and the amount of players that do enjoy playing it, that it won't be probably won't ever be changed. But with the addition of warbands and many of the skills that are traditionally not viable or um, for instance say uh, mining or farming and such like that where the only way to actually get XP in that skill was to actually do the skill as opposed to say something like um, fletching you could you know collect the wood or you could buy the wood or herb lore you could grow the herbs and then do it like that where mining you only had to mine to get the XP I got mining before warbands came out and I, um, I pride myself on that, right? And so now it's being called a, you know, Warbands Cape. You know, all these kids doing Warbands. And I understand it's not going to get changed, but have you thought about addressing that at all? I don't know. Sounds like a balancing question, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Warbands are still dangerous. Um, don't get me wrong, there are French chats and things like that, um, but it is still hard to get your full supplies a day. Well, relatively hard, I'll say. Um, I, I still think that the experience you get is worth the risk and effort you put into warbands. Uh, and we have made, we have made, we've ton made tons of changes since launch to try and make it fair, try and make it more risky, try and make it more honest. Uh, we got rid of alt bands recently, for example. Um, so I, I, I do kind of agree that potentially those skills are now not as prestigious as they once were but i don't think it's as bad as sort of a lot of people say that it's now just a warband skill it's, uh, like you warband prod and that sort of stuff i don't think that's true um but certainly we could do things to make the wilderness more dangerous um isn't that right Mortier? well of course you do make a valid point that uh, towards the well, I can't name dates, but 
towards the middle of the early part of next year, once we've got some budget for it, we'd like to make some extensive additions to the reasons people find to go into the wilderness of all play styles. Uh, we'd like to ensure that skillers and PVMers and the PVPers who are likely to prey on them uh, all have the cause to go in there, all have the cause to have something on their person that is worth taking off of them. And in general, we'd like to push the population of the wilderness up by a great deal. Uh, once there are more people traveling in the wilderness, that will obviously make war bands more dangerous. And risk versus reward is always the, the key trade-off there. So I'm hoping that part of the wilderness revival project will, will assist with the current problem with war bands. Um, I have uh, two questions. The first one is uh, about warbands still. Um, the issue I have with warbands is not the fact that it's run by friends chats or whatever. It's the fact that the people who do do it can sell those supplies onwards, uh, effectively turning the skill into a viable skill. So any skill that's in warbands is pretty much a viable skill if you've got the money. And is there anything you, you, you may do or might not do to alleviate that or stop it? That sounds like a balancing question to me. <laughs> As I say, we, we, we got rid of old bands recently. It's we certainly something we don't want to happen to those skills and certainly not happen to war bands. Um, so we can look, back, look at this on Monday, for example. Um, I go talk to Maud Dean and uh, see what we can do about it. How's that for immediate action? Um, okay. Your second part uh, question? My second question was, like you said, a quarter of bonus XP in the game has been removed by the swap shop. Uh, is there any plans to either bring it back in the future or maybe keep it? Anyone want to say that? I can answer it again. Yeah, I, I know nothing about the swap shop, I'm afraid. Um, uh, the MTX guys that worked on that uh, did a podcast last week, week before, and they said that they might bring it back. Uh, we might see Vic back in future uh, at different intervals, resetting the, uh, the multiplier and that sort of thing. So we might see him come back in the future. Is the reason for bonus experience to actually balance the game by removing certain resources like the upcoming uh, bonus experience weekend due to resources coming into the game such as from Araxo and other bosses? The, so you, is the bonus XP weekend intended to no, help no, remove resources? Bonus experience, is that all balancing, trying to remove resources from the game? Well, bonus experience in general is a way of rewarding participation in, in content without, uh, without removing the requirement to train that skill in normal ways. Um, most bonus experience comes from stuff like Treasure Hunter, buying bonds and spends. Mm, what, what are the rates of that from, from Treasure Hunter? I'm not, not really qualified to comment on the um, Sorry, was that the rates of... Personally, most of my bonus experience has come from buying bonds uh, and keys. Yeah, um, well, the reason we, we, we shifted to bonus experience from Treasure Hunter and previously School of Fortune was so uh, that we can sort of make players like earn their experience. Like That was the way we did it, why we did it, um, instead of getting straight experience lamps. In terms of is bonus experience and bonus experience again a way of removing skilling resources? No. <laughs> um, it doesn't. It helps a little bit, but it doesn't help a lot. Um, and it's, that's certainly not the reason, or the balancing reason, why we have bonus experience or bonus experience weekends. Um, I don't know what you guys can answer about Iron Man mode, uh, but you guys went back on the fact that you can no longer you you, you can't use keys to gain XP in Iron Man anymore. Uh, but can you still get the <coughs> Wicked Pouch and le Legendary Pets from Solomon in an Iron Man account? Because those really help you out in an Iron Man account, and that's kind of unfair. I would not expect you to be able to get those, no. I can't say for sure, because I've not been at all involved in its development, but it would surprise me if, that, if it were possible. All right, thank you. Can I ask one more question? Go ahead. Will we ever see Western Lance... I, th I think you've already seen the Western Lands. There's a globe in the wise old man's house that's, uh, <laughs> that's got them on. It no, may not be an accurate globe. Yeah. Would, you like, would you like to do the Western Lands? 
Yeah, I'll make the Western Lands. Okay, he's, he's going to make the Western Lands uh, next week? <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. Just, um, just tell me what you want. In fairness, if we add more places you can go and walk on to the game... I was, I was talking about ports, though, kind of. Uh, then, in that case, almost certainly there will be more places to send your ships when the next ports expansion comes out. That's being worked on by Scrum Team 2 at the moment, Retention Team 2, Mod Sroli and Mod Osborne, uh, okay. currently heading that up. All right. um, where you will go... <laughs> is not yet set in stone. We're polling those. All right. uh, there will almost certainly be new voyages to the eastern lands, but there will be other places to go as well. It's not strictly impossible that the western lands could be a part of that. All right. uh, it would probably require quite a lot of acclimation. Yeah. All right. Um, what, co what considerations go into making like a dangerous area, like Apatol or Trollheim, where... Uh, it has a stat decrease, or somewhere that's really hostile to the character, like a dangerous environment? Um, I think one of the, ma like the main things will be the level requirements, what we expect you to have in that area, so we can sort of go, this is the type of player we would expect to see, and then we can scale how hostile it is based on that. Um, something I've been looking at really recently is bringing um, the idea of bringing back aggressive mobs back. I'm not sure how people feel about that. If I just shout out to the audience, people want it. Yeah. I, I like that idea. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like, we tried it in the combat beta, if any of you saw, but one of the problems was because the whole game's multi-way now, like, as soon as you went to a dangerous area, everyone was on you, and it was just unbearable. Um, so I took some time out last week or the week before, and I've made it behave as if it's a single way area for the NPCs but you can still attack multiple NPCs at once if you you can attack multiple NPCs at once if you want so um, yeah so based on that reaction like, I might try and talk to Mardine again and see if we can accelerate it into the game because it looks like you guys would want that Thank you As far as environmental effects are concerned uh, we haven't used those very much lately but I did stumble across the other day on a test square in our development environment, just one square north of my own, something that Mod Chihiro had left behind that essentially simulated being caught in a sandstorm and uh, damaged by swirling winds that carried sand to tear skin from bone and so forth. Uh, I was very surprised when my test character started dropping dead. Uh, so it's something that we have mechanics to handle, it's something that we would certainly be pleased to see suggestions of, of where you would like that sort of thing to show up uh, when, we, when we launch the Rune Labs that I mentioned earlier. Any more questions? Um, I was just wondering what areas of the game will be graphically reworked next? Um, but I do request that the Black Knight Titan never gets updated ever. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, funny thing. One of our mods w was uh, opening that the other day in his model editor and looking, no. looking very upset no. at it. Never, <laughs> never update that. So, uh, never. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we lynched him and uh, and killed him <laughs> and salted the earth over his workstation. Uh, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid I can't promise that it won't get a rework, which is actually the opposite of what I'm often asked to say. <laughs> um, we do have, or, or did have, plans at one point to rework Falador and Port Sarum, but I suspect, I suspect they were now so long ago that any work that was done on them would have to be completely redone due to the amount of new stuff we've added there in, in the meantime, obviously. That was pre-ports, that was pre-giant mole. So, uh, I, so I couldn't say for sure anything that is currently slated for a graphics rework that will definitely happen. Sorry. Um, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Bad graphic fans, we may have lost the Black Knight Titan, but Rocknar and our POHs will still live on. Rocknar. Rocknar. <laughs> Bless him and all six of his polygons. <laughs> um, ready for another question? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I see that. Uh, uh. I see that it's really important for uh, you guys to, of course, make a really good first impression to newer players, and it's also really important for you to keep the players that you have to get, so you, you keep giving them more and more content, more more and more high level content. Um, so you can see that with how you you made um, that new island that you start in now. What's it called? Ashdale. Ashdale, yeah. You start in Ashdale with that quest now, and then you have the pad system, and you reworked Black Knight's Fortress to be uh, the one with Owen. What's it called? Death of Chivalry, yeah, which is a really great quest. So you're really focusing on getting that good first impression and then keeping the high-low players. But I feel like there's a lot in the middle that sort of looks rusty. Does that make sense to you at all? So, like, is there any plans to, like, sort of look at the things that are in the middle and not just at the end and beginning? What? Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so... Part of that we're addressing on um, Monday with an update to some of the middle tier Slayer monsters, adding more. I assume that was what you was. Yep. Yeah. Adding more uh, rewards to um, sort of things through like the sort of Kurask level to even all the way up to the top of the Dark Beast because a lot of them were sort of lacking um, rewards for their difficulty. Um, we we know we know the sort of middle tier of 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 the game has been sort of been no one say neglected but certainly not as prominent as high and low level. Um, so that's why we are looking at that sort of thing. We like we've we released the Mighty Four was the first master quest in three years, for example. Um, someone's going to quote me and that says wrong, but I think it's about three years. Um, and that was like a mid-ish level quest. Um, we've got the Beast and Drop we work said that's we're working rock slugs, wall beasts. Like all these low-level slayer creatures or middle-level slayer creatures that no one really cares about anymore, I guess. Um, but like, or well, you guys don't care about maybe. Um, but like, is the mid-level of slayer, and it's something that we didn't really do with the demons, didn't really do with anything else. We've had always had it, like really high-level slayer monsters, uh, never really addressed the middle. Um, so yeah, we are looking at the middle of the game, not just the start and end. Also, I want to say in the middle, they now have that great giant mole. <laughs> that was put together. That is true. Obviously, obviously, the the focus tends to come on the new players who are confused and need guidance. Otherwise, they'll sort of get lost and give up. And on the high level players who have been uh, faithfully with us for long enough to become high level players, and so in the middle of the game, that's where you tend to have quite a lot of existing content that they can plough through, but but yeah, perhaps some of it is getting a little older than, than should be these days. Uh, it's worth it's certainly worth keeping an eye on. It's certainly worth standing up for the mid-range player. <laughs> Obviously, I don't count myself as mid-range <laughs> anymore, being, oh, at least level 2200. <laughs> Noob. Just a quick question for everyone. Am I the one who's never killed a rock slug? No, I haven't either. No, I've never, killed never killed a rock slug? <laughs> I've killed a rock slug. I must have killed a rock slug. <laughs> Maybe I've killed a rock slug. <laughs> yeah, I've killed a rock slug. <laughs> <laughs> you killed a rock slug? Yep, killed one. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently it's just us. Right, we are the only people in this room to have ever killed a rock slug. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure that will change when the drop table is lovely. <laughs> Like yeah. You use the bag of salt. Yeah. It's the one with the guitar that you. Uh... Yeah. No. When's the rock for three work? <laughs> Monday. Monday. Rock for three work. <laughs> yep. Specific. Mo- yeah. Rock it's definitely the rock slug rework now. Yeah. Rock slug and special guest other things. <laughs> New hashtag. <laughs> Next up. Um, are we ever going to be able to fix Edgeville after its attack? <laughs> I actually proposed that as an update to construction, that you'd be able to go around and repair all the bits that you'd horrendously broken. Uh, likewise, Unferth's house that you so callously destroyed during that course. Um, I, I, I do think that we should be able to pick up the messes that we leave behind. It's, it's probably not going to be a priority anytime soon, but I'd like to see it. What do you think? Should we put out Edgeville? Um, well, for me, Edgeville's still perfect because I am a noob. <laughs> so it's all your fault for burning it down. In the f- well, not you didn't burn it down, but you started the quest that did it. So it's your own fault. <laughs> uh, 
with the new update on Monday, uh, did Darpies have any specific drops that they're adding to? Double mm, 19 boots? No. no. <laughs> No. Yeah. Go on, no. you haven't that. I mean, they're pretty good now. <laughs> um, what we did to Dark Beast is what we did to Abyssal Demons, other than add new weapons. So they used, they're much more profitable than they used to be. Um, yeah, and they don't spaff out horrible things anymore. Just good things. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? that word? <laughs> you did, does so. Anyone, does anyone understand that word? <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's call attention to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hi, YouTube. Wasn't it before that it was, like, in terms of value, he, like, it was, here was cows, here was dark beasts? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, cows were more, pro more profitable than dark beasts on average at one point. Uh, yeah, that's not the case anymore. <laughs> yeah, we've nerfed cows. <laughs> 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 Um, I sort of have a question for everyone in the room before I ask the initial question. Uh, who here has done one of a kind? Just raise your hand. Yep. All right. Um, and then, did everyone did everyone here feel like that was a grand master quest? No. Can we? I'm just wondering. That feels more like a master quest, in my opinion. What do you think? Because. I don't know. I feel like... Oh, you, I can't really comment. This isn't really a question, so it feels well, kind of weird, but... It's, it's done by requirements. It's just that a Grandmaster quest usually has a lot more people into it, sort of. So, that, like, while you got the sleep, when you put the entire team together to take down Lucian, sort of thing, you feel like you're part of something big. No Man's Requiem doesn't have all that many people in it. That's true. Uh, I'd sort no. of call that... Um, but the combat in that, in that is really intense, though. Yeah. That's true. Was. Was. Well, Very good point. Yeah, okay. I, I have a confession to make. I did insta-kill Nomad to complete that quest. Oh. <laughs> I, heard that you, I heard that you guys couldn't kill Virago for the trailer for RuneScape, so you jumped to the last phase and killed it. Insta-killed it. I don't believe that's true. It's not true? No. no. Oh, okay. You actually yeah, killed I, it. I think, it, I think okay. they did it legit. Rumors, then. Um, the requirements are the only thing that we base... Grandmasterness okay. of quests. Of, okay. Uh, and admittedly, the thresholds are a little arbitrary. Maybe. But we don't base it on length. We don't base it on number of dramatis personae. All right. Uh, we don't base it on complexity of the puzzles. All right. Uh, otherwise, obviously, Elemental Workshop 3 would be a <laughs> super <laughs> ultra grandmaster plus double. Kind, kind oh, yeah, of yeah. So, just want to add some, to that. Some more from Sorry. Um, with Nomad as well, some laughs in the audience. I, they, I've started a thread on the forums. It's either in future, I think it's in existing game updates, game content, whatever that forum's called. Um, basically asking for feedback on quest bosses because I know a lot of them are really, really bad right now. Like, I did Do No Evil the other day and I killed one of the, all the monkeys in two attacks, which is pretty embarrassing. So. I've been going through my own time and like buffing the bosses individually. So Nomad, in my stream, is a badass again. <laughs> so hopefully we can give that to you soon when I get it done. Do you feel with the new Grandmaster quests and high-level quests and content that you're still possibly babying the player through it? Like asking if they want to teleport somewhere rather than sending them away, giving them items instead of letting them collect them themselves? There's, okay, design hat on. There is a difference between babying the player and cutting out the the tedious bits. Uh, we have gone a little far in the past, uh, particularly with the the medium level quests that we that we were adding before, and novice quests to a degree as well. Although obviously novice quests get a higher degree of guidance in by virtue of being novice quests. Uh, we don't want people to go traipsing through the world for 45 minutes to get to a destination only to find that we've arbitrarily decided that they now need a shovel that we didn't tell them about before and they've now got to walk 45 minutes back, pick it up out of the bank, walk 45 minutes back again and do it again. So there is a level of, of allowing 
allowing you to have the tools that you need to get to the bits of the quest that are actually quest bits that I'm keen on making sure stay in our quests. At the same time, we have heard various people say we don't want to be just taken to the next set piece. We want to have to uh, sleuth out around the world. We want to have to find where we're going. We want to have to discover and detect and, uh, and solve puzzles that are related to the layout of the game world as well as just to what goes on in the rooms that we send you to. And, and we have heard you on that. Uh, it's something that we're focusing on. Oh, let me pass the mic. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave, tell, tell us a little more about uh, Elder God Quest and how we're not holding the player's hands so much. So, in the Elder God Quest, if you saw it up there uh, with uh, Mod Mark's talk, you've got a gone companion who is acting as a sort of a, a tracker who can sniff out uh, certain types of magic, particularly teleports. Uh, and you'll sort of be working with that character to figure out where you need to go next. So there's sort of a, a puzzle element in sort of working with this golem to like figure out where in the world I need to go to find these sites of what these characters are doing. I don't really want to give away too much. <laughs> don't, don't give away the plot. Or yeah. The puzzles. There are puzzles. There are plot. There are you have to go around and you have to sort of do a little bit of work to figure out where you need to go. Right. This session is about to end. Thank you. Uh, please, you know, this was the awesome content team. <laughs>